ahead and record. So I'm so happy to introduce the amazing Dawn Ferentino. Um, just to tell you a little bit about her, I mean, this is a former accountant, mom of two boys who were very active, very involved in sports. Um, she crushed her first year with Isogenics. Her second year, she doubled that. Her third year, she tripled that and hit millionaire. And, you know, although everyone earns a different income depending on your hard work, this is a woman who really does work hard. So we decided to ditch the comp plan call tonight and talk about income producing activities because this is about getting paid, right? This is about changing the world. This is about making a difference in our community and kind of leading the way. Um, on our Ed Blunt call, he basically talked about like making a stand against companies like McDonald's and Coca-Cola, right? This is our movement. But if things are going to move, Right? We have to be talking. We have to be doing the income producing activities. So Dawn, happy birthday. Welcome. We've got 30 minutes. Take it away, girlfriend. Thank you so much. Are you able to share me so that I can share my screen? If not, that's okay. I'll just talk and I'll just pull up my own screen. It's totally I, you. I don't know how to do. Oh, make host. I can make you a host. Do you want to make Dawn the host? I've never done this before. There you go. I'm the host. Awesome. Great. Okay, thank you. So I'm gonna I'm sh gonna share my screen in one second. I just need to get back out and then come back in from this screen just because now she's made me a host. Make sure that your lines are muted, guys. That's all. Okay. So guys, the most important thing when you're building your business is that you do have to remember that you got to get into action, right? And so when Angela said that we did we ditch the comp plan, it's not that the comp plan is not important. It's just that what's more important is is knowing exactly what to what to do with the, uh, with the comp plan. Hold on. I can't, I'm still not able to share. Hold on. Let me try one more time. Here we go. I got it. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to share. Uh, and I've, for those of you that have seen this before, it's just going to be repetitive, but honestly, this business is all about consistency, right? So if you're not doing consistent things, it doesn't matter what you know or what you don't know, it's not going to work. So when I first started my business, for those of you that don't know my story very quickly in literally like a minute, um, I got started on the products. I wanted to lose weight. I had blown Alexis off for 10 months. So we're going to talk about follow-up during this call. For 10 months, I said no to her. And the only reason that I even said yes after 10 months is because she was consistent. She was still inviting me to Carol Taylor calls. How many people come in in the chat remember Carol Taylor? I mean, her calls were amazing. And every Wednesday night, I was still plugging into the Carol Taylor call because Alexis would send me the, 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 the link or the phone number because you used to dial in back then. Um, she was consistent with her before and after pictures. She was consistent with sending me something, like just something that would relate or resonate with me. She was consistent. So when I was finally ready, because I wasn't ready back in November of 11, when I was ready in June of 2012, I called her. If she wasn't consistent, I would have went with somebody else because I already knew about Isogenics. I knew it had a money back guarantee and I knew the products worked because I saw different people have results. So if she wasn't consistent with me, she didn't continue to pour love into me even when I wasn't ready. I wouldn't have signed up with her. So that's number one, being consistent. Number two, I didn't get started right away in the business. So listen, your business builders are in your organization. You just haven't met them yet. There could be two, three, four, five, six levels deep. I'm working with people seven levels deep right now on me. They could be somebody you personally enrolled five years ago. I just talked to this guy, John, him and his wife collectively together. Both have lost, well, he lost 50 something and she's down like 30 something. So almost a hundred pounds between the two of them. I just called John today and I'm like, Jessica is sitting on, Mid, like thousands of banked volume. John, when are you guys going to do this? And he's like, you know what? Let me talk to Jessica. I'm like, just get your products paid. They've been with me for three years and they've said no every single time, but I still ask them. So finally, when I was ready to do this business, I did what Alexis told me. I did everything she told me because I didn't know what I didn't know. So guys, if you don't tell your new people what to do, they don't know what they don't know and they think that they don't need to do anything. So when she said, have a launch party, 40 people showed up my first launch party. When she said, go into local businesses and tell them who you are, I walked into local businesses and told them who I was. When she said, get to meetups, I didn't know what the hell meetup was. I went to meetup.com. I created my own meetups. I created my own culture. When she said get to networking events, as much as I hated it and I was so nervous and shy, I went to networking events. So number one, be coachable. But number two, you got to tell your people what to do. They don't know what they don't know. 
So if you don't tell them what to do, they have no clue how to build this business. So we're gonna go over some income producing activities for you, but also for your team. You guys may be into this business to make an extra $500 a month, and that's awesome. But you may enroll somebody who is dying inside to make an extra $1,000, $5,000, $10,000 a month because they just lost their full-time income or they just had a parent that got sick. For us that are from West Orange, we just saw that one of our dear friends today lost his wife to cancer. I mean, you don't know what people are going through. You have no idea what's going on behind that closed door. So don't judge anybody that you bring in. But if you don't set everybody up the same way and teach them what to do, you can guarantee that not only will you fail, but so will all of them. So 90% of us do not have any network marketing experience and we need to be told what to do. So what is an IPA? And again, guys, you've got to learn your comp plan, but we're not talking about that tonight. Go into your back office and learn that. Income producing activities, create your comp plan. I remember Alexis asking me, and if she's on this call, she'll, <laughs> she'll tell you. She had an event, a start event at her Hoboken um, gym. And she pulls me aside and she's like, I think Isogenics overpaid me. I'm like, what? She's like, I think Isogenics overpaid me. I'm like, why do you think they overpaid you? She said, because she didn't realize that she got paid 250 cycles and then 250 match as an executive. She thought it was 250 in total. She had no idea that she could make 500 cycles. You don't need to know the comp plan to make money, guys. You need to get into action to make money. You need to do income producing activities. So IPAs are income producing activities and it's a plan of action that you take that's gonna generate income for your business. Daily method of operation, consistency, working on your planner, putting dedicated blocks of time in there, power hours. I don't care if they're power 15 minutes, power 30 minutes, power hours, whatever they are, they need to be dedicated blocks of time that you are setting aside specifically for your isogenics business. Planning your night out before. How many people, and you can comment in the chat, and I'm not reading it right now, so you're helping and supporting and helping other people with this. How many people take their planner out the night before and start putting your stuff in? So this is what I do with my team in every December. We actually didn't do it this past year, but we've done it every December prior. We take out our planners and on a team call in December, we actually put everything in our planners. And the core four events, all the team calls go in our planners from January through December. Why not? Why wouldn't they go in your, your planner? You know that the team calls every Monday night at 8.30 for us, every Tuesday night, 9.30 for Alexis, Tuesday night, Monday night, night. Why aren't they in your planner? You know they're happening. Zoom calls, 8.30 on Tuesdays. Why aren't they in your planner? So plan out your planner, not only the night before, but actually the year before. Turning off all distractions, getting an eight timer, and really seriously committing to your power hour. For one hour, my phone is in my office, my phone is in my bedroom, my phone is in my living room, it's away from me right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put an egg timer on here, and every 15 minutes, I'm going to do something else on my schedule or my agenda. Social media, we all know how to post, I'm not doing a social media training, but really messaging your prospects. Leaving, doing your Facebook lives. I haven't done a Facebook live in, in a little bit. I mean, I've been doing it with these damn ducks that are in my pool, but I haven't done a true Facebook live recently, which I need to get back on with. I know that that's part of the thing I'm locking in. Friend requesting new people um, and contributing and adding value to the Facebook groups that you're a part of. Like, are you truly doing that? That's an income producing activity for yourself. When you're doing social media and you're contributing um, uh, to the groups, messaging people that you that, that comment on your post and just thanking them. You don't need to friend request 99,000 of them because most people probably that you're friending are not gonna join you right away. But just getting that connection, just messaging people so now that when you post something, maybe they're following you or start to follow them or just say, hey, I'd love to follow you. Can you follow me back so that we can you know, support each other? Um, and just keeping them on your list. Inviting someone to coffee. Guys, we have this thing here that's called a phone. If you don't start picking it up and calling people and you're just praying and wishing and hoping that every time you do a post on any kind of your social media that somebody's gonna say yes to you, you're never gonna succeed. You have to go belly to belly sometimes. Um, inviting someone to an event, whether it's a sip and sample, whether it's a super Saturday, um, whether it's just any kind of an event, maybe it's like a, a meetup that you're going to and you're like, hey, I'd really like you to come to this. I think this would be really cool. I saw in your post that you love crocheting and I'm going to this like knitting thing and thought you might want to come with me. Going to other business owners. So this is what I'm, I don't ever say I'm like good at anything, but I am really good at talking to other businesses. So I go to other businesses and I actually print out flyers and I go into their location. Oh, it's in the other room. I'll get it before the end of the call and I'll show you what I give them. I have a flyer and then I have a postcard holder and I have a business card holder, depending on what the location looks like. 
And I bring my own tape. Angela was making fun of me the other day because I actually bring my own tape because I don't rely on them to have tape. And I ask them, I first start off by saying, I'm a local business owner down the road. And I think it's really important because we want to support local businesses in our community, but we also want the support of other local businesses. The statistics on how many businesses fail in their first year, I'm talking the mom and pop shops, is so high. Guys, it's really hard to succeed as a small business owner nowadays. Um, so we want to support local businesses. I don't use um, this to print for like any printing I'm doing. I use a local printer. Like I don't use big shops anymore. I go to local things. So you want to use the mom and pop shops as much as you can. But I go in and I say, I'm a local business owner. First, I introduce myself. And I asked them, them their name because the one thing Jeff Combs always told me is the sweetest sound to somebody's ears is their name. So I asked them what their name is and I say, Mike, it's so nice to meet you. My name is Dawn and I'm also a local business owner down the road. And I was just wondering, do you allow other local businesses to hang flyers or put their material in your location? I would be more than happy to take your information as well and support you any way I can. And like people will go into businesses and they'll take pictures of my cards and stuff and they'll be like, hi, oh, I just saw you in here. I just saw you in there because why not? People want to be supported. So when you tell them you're going to support them back, they're going to say yes to you. Some places have like a, like a cork board or something, which is kind of easy. That's why I said it depends what they have. Some people have like a shelf. Some people have like the main area where like you might pay when you leave and they might have like little business card holders. So I have like the big postcard holders. Um, that I have my postcards in. I have business card holders that I have my business cards in. And then I have flyers because depending on the location, it may change. Different things may be required to be at that location. When I have sipping samples, I go to all my local businesses and I say, hey, I was just wondering, would it be okay if I left this flyer here? My event is Tuesday night, so it's only going to be up like four days. So would it be okay if I hung a flyer and you can for sure take it down after Tuesday? Because when people know that they don't have to commit to keeping that up forever, they'll let you hang a flyer. So when you have sipping samples or opportunity meetings or wellness Wednesdays, hang flyers in your local businesses. If you don't want your address on there, which is a little creepy, I don't put my address on there when I do that, have your phone number and have an RSVP, limited seating, RSVP by blank date. Um, share what you do with your friends or even your chicken list. So, you know, all of us, all of us, including myself, raise your hand in the chat. Do you have somebody on your chicken list you haven't called? How many people have somebody they have not called yet on their chicken list? And I know all of you have, and if you say no, you're all lying because I still have people on my chicken list I haven't called. So definitely make sure that you get that chicken list going. And this is the conversation that I have with these people. So again, I was coachable, right? Coachable is the number one thing when you're doing this business. So Alexa said to me, call your friends and family and tell them what you're doing. I have no idea why there's red lines just coming across the screen right now, if you guys can see them, but whatever. Uh, but anyway, Alexis is like, call your, your friends and your family, tell them what you're doing. So this was my conversation. I did alter it a little bit, but it worked for me. So you can take what I'm saying, and I know I'm talking fast. So I don't, Angela, do you record these calls? Yes, right? Yes. Like on your YouTube. Yes. So just go back and hit play and then hit pause, hit play, hit pause. But here was the conversation when I call people. And I'll use Angela as an example. So I would text her. Hey, Angela, do you have five minutes? So sure. she's going to say, yeah. So Angela, you have five minutes? Sure. Can you jump on the phone real quick now? Yeah. Okay. So I would call her and this is my conversation. Angela, I'm super excited. Now, if you're brand new, this is your conversation. If you're not brand new, all you simply have to do is just say you're relaunching instead of launching. I am so super excited. Angela, I just launched my own business. And she's going to be like, what? I thought you were doing accounting. I am, I'm still doing accounting, but Angela, I'm so super excited. I just launched this business. I like partnered with this humongous nutritional company and I'm super, super excited. And here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for anybody that you may know that's looking to lose weight, maybe gain some extra energy for themselves. Um, just feel better overall, Angela, or you know what? Maybe work out harder at the gym or even maybe earn some extra money for themselves. Now, Angela, I don't even know if this is for you, but what I'd love to do is get you on the phone for like 10 or 15 minutes so I can show you what I do so you can refer me better. I cannot tell you how many people would get on the phone with me and they would actually enroll after that. So, so many people would be like, oh, well, I could lose 10 pounds or I could lose 20 pounds or make extra money. Like, did you know I just lost my job? Like, oh my God, this is universe calling you. So I don't call them saying I got a great opportunity for you. 
I'm calling him saying I could use all the support and help that I can get from my friends and family. I'm reaching out to you because I love and respect you. And here's what I'm looking for. So that's one way to start with your chicken list. Okay. So if you're having an issue with your chicken list and you're afraid to call that person, call them asking for referrals okay. and then get them on the phone to explain what you do so they can refer you better. Cold calling. So I do a lot of cold calling and some of you guys are on my Thursday call that I do. But more importantly, I would, I had a coach one time, it was Todd Falcone, and he, he really put me way out of my comfort zone. And I actually was very um, like upset with him. And I actually told him I didn't want to do this activity, but I did it because I was coachable. And he made me call like 35 or 40 realtors. And he made me go into like Google and like Google realtors in a, in a specific zip code. And he made me call them. And it was so uncomfortable and it was so like scary, um, but I did it. So cold calling, I mean, I remember sending, I can't even tell you how many emails to accountants. Um, I would go to like a hundred accountants in the, you know, 08723 zip code and they will all pop up, right? So everybody's website usually has the button that says contact me um, for more information, like somehow where you can connect with them. So I would actually send them either an email or I would hit the thing that said contact me and I would just, I would share a little bit, not much, but I would give enough information where it would intrigue them. If they were local, I'd invite them to an opportunity meeting. So cold calling, going on people's websites, trying to get their information so that you can send them something so that they can actually have a conversation with you. Email's great, constant contact for blast emails, but don't be blasting emails to people that you've never had a conversation with. I don't agree with that. Like I know so many times I'm getting an email with like 99,000 people on the email like about something that somebody just started. Like, don't do that. Like you want it to be personal. You want the person to have a conversation. But if you dripped on somebody, and I know Amanda Wegger just talked about this too. She just enrolled somebody who she's been dripping on forever through her constant contact. So if you've been dripping on somebody, they know what you're doing. They're well aware of what you're doing. And you know, maybe you have a promotion or you have free membership or you have free shipping or whatever it is. Send that out through a blast email. Emailing prospects a new product or promotion, just in general. Like, Maybe you've never had a conversation with them, but you're like, hey, I'd love to you know, meet you for coffee. I'd love to talk to you about something. We have this great promotion going on. I know that you know what I do, and I've really never approached you about this, but I thought that maybe now would be the perfect time for that. Um, following up on prospects you've never connected with is super important. So comment in the chat if you followed up with somebody less than five times and then never followed up with them again. And it, it should be all, how many people are on this call? uh like a hundred yeah it should be all 100 of you that have all had a conversation with five people i mean five times and then never contacted them again i'm going to show you something at the end that's going to show you how much money you're missing sending information from your company's website i only do this if i've had a conversation with them i have isis sales tools on my phone maybe we've had numerous conversations maybe we have had a meeting, maybe we went belly to belly, whatever. And all of a sudden, like a really great video came out. I'm like, oh my God, like I got to send this to Angela. And I'll be like, hey, I was thinking of you. This video just came out on, on our website and I thought that it would really resonate. So I use ISA sales tools a lot. Sending thank you to your customers. This is the one thing that I think is super important, guys. Keep a log of your 30 day, well, everybody, you know, not just your 30 day people, but they might be on a 30 day program more than that, but keep a log of your people, whether it's a notebook or whatever. And as soon as they finish their 30 day program, send them a thank you card and a congratulations card. So I send everybody a card after their first 30 day program that just says, congratulations, you, you've completed your thir first 30 days and I'm so super proud of you. You're down X amount of pounds or you have more energy or whatever it is, but send them a thank you with two business cards, one for them and one for their friend. Um, and thank them, thank them for their business. I remember Todd Falcone telling me one time on a coaching call, or maybe it was in a training, that you don't have a customer when they first order. You have an order. They are not a customer. They are a customer when they order the second time. So retention is what builds our residual income. And this business, the best, the best product Isogenics has is our wealth creation, as Jim Cooper told us. So you don't have wealth creation if you don't have residual income. You make a lot of money on PIBs, but they go away and it's a lot of freaking work, right? So you want to eventually have residual income coming in. Send handwritten cards to old customers thanking them. Send congratulations cards to business partners. Amazon Prime is your best friend. Spend the $100 and send stuff off from Amazon Prime all the time to your business partners. People that are on this call that are on my team, they will tell you that I send them things through Amazon Prime send stuff to your people guys mailing out samples i'm not a big keen person on this 
but I will send them a hydrate stick. It's pretty much all I send out or an isodelite. I don't send out shakes ever. I don't send out bars. I don't send out any of that stuff. And brochures or flyers for your, with your contact information is super important because you may be in like a location that allows you to leave stuff, but more importantly, you may be in a location that you're actually having a conversation with the owner. Maybe it's a doctor, maybe it's a dentist. Just have this stuff on hand. I know we're running out of time, so I'm gonna go really fast. Going through your phone, super, super important to go through your phone and re just, if you don't know, so this is what I did. And I know that, you know, I lied and I don't usually lie. So it's a little white lie, but what I would do is if I didn't know somebody in my phone or if I wanted to really call them and they were on my chicken list, this is what I would say. I would text them and I'd be like, hi, this is Dawn Ferentino. I just got a new phone and your number came up, but your name wasn't attached. Who is this and how do we know each other? It's awesome guys, because now it brings you, first of all, you, we all have people in our phone. We don't know. Every one of us has people in our phone. We don't know. So now you can have who that person is. If you really truly don't know them, if you do know them and you're always afraid to call them, it starts a conversation, right? Now, after that, what you're going to do is in the notes section of that specific person, you're going to put down every time going forward, everybody that's in your phone, how you know them. Why are they in your phone? Angela Moresca met her at the networking event on September 29th. Like everybody goes in your phone with a description on how you know them. Send them a text that you were thinking of them for those that were in your phone. I just did this with my, one of my um, son's friends, Alex. She's definitely gonna be in this business one day. I've been tripping on her for the past five years. Um, she's a yogi. She is like this amazing person that packed up her stuff when she was 18 years old and moved out to California on her own. And she's definitely joining me. Like I already know that the universe is giving her to me. She does that. She did the products years ago and I know she's coming back. But even just the other day, I just texted her. I'm like, hey, I'm thinking of you. Like, when are you coming back to Jersey? And she's like, oh my God, I'm here this weekend. I'm like, oh my God, can we get together? She's like, no, I have a wedding and then I'm flying back out. But I thank you so much and I'm going to be out in like three more weeks and I'll definitely get together with you. So just sending them a text that you were thinking of them. Um, putting notes in your phone. I already went over that with the pictures. Getting out of the house, guys. Again, this business is not built strictly from, the, from your computer. The beauty about what we do is it is built from your computer, right? You can build it from home. You can build it from vacation. You can build it from wherever you are. But you have to get out. You've got to get to networking events. You've got to volunteer, putting your business cards out. How many people saw my post on Facebook that I was at the spine doctor the other day? And um, sorry, there's a fly flying. I was at the spine doctor the other day. And I walked by the, 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 the um, like diagnostic area. And in the diagnostic area, I'm walking by, I'm like, holy shoot, my business cards were in like, like a container that had like cards on, on GoodRx. Did anybody ever hear of GoodRx or something like that? Somebody put my business cards in there. I was like, oh my God, who did that? I was so grateful. So getting out, putting your business cards out, meeting people, the networking events, gonna talk briefly, five minutes, gonna talk briefly about networking events. Number one, you gotta get to them, but then you gotta really play the room. You gotta know exactly who's hosting the event, what the event is for, connecting with the person that's hosting it. Usually your networking events will have a list of people. Stalk them. Go through the list of people that click off going and kind of stalk them so that you know who you're looking to connect with when you get there. You have to be intentional at these networking events, guys. Super, super important. If you go to a networking event, you're not intentional. You don't know who's running it. You don't know who's going. And you're just kind of like walking around the room looking aimlessly lost. They, people will feel that. So scan out the room before you get there. See exactly how it's laid out. Look for the people that are going that you want to connect with and go find them. So when, I, when you go to a networking event, your badge or your name tag or whatever you want to call it goes on your right side, not your left. I always teach this. Everybody puts their name tag on the left. It's just an automatic to put it on your left side. It goes on your right. And the reason is because when you shake that person's hand, they're looking at your right side. Okay. So your name tag goes on your right. Do not put your business. Don't put isogenics. Don't put health and wellness coach. Put nothing except your name. Because if somebody's not looking to lose weight or get healthy and they see health and wellness coach on, their, on your tag, they're walking away from you. And also at networking events, you want to be able to get more information about them than you give about you. So this is a couple of tricks of networking events. And again, I know I'm going really fast, guys, but we have four minutes. So when you go to a networking event and you get somebody's information, Right on the back, you don't have to do it right there and then, but you might need to go in the bathroom periodically and do it if you're meeting a lot of people. Right on the back of their business card, something about them. Um, Angela, a daughter was sick tonight. Um, who else is on here? Jody, beautiful orange scarf. 
just write something about that person on the business card as well as the event that you were at. Brick Chamber of Commerce, car show. Now what's gonna happen is you're gonna go home and here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna get home, maybe not that night, maybe in the morning, whenever, but you're doing it within 24 hours and you're gonna to go to your computer and you're gonna have your dedicated block of time in there from the night before because we planned it out and you're going to type Angela Maresca with her email. The topic line is going to be Brick Chamber of Commerce event. And here's your conversation. And I can, uh, I can copy and paste what I've written um, and send it to Angela and she could post it. But it goes something like this. Angela, we would say, hi, Angela. It was so nice to meet you at the car show last night. Um, I love the scarf that you had on. I, you know, where'd you get it from again? I know that you told me that you got it from, from a local store. Where was it again? I'd love to go get one myself. Or if she told me her daughter was sick, I hope your daughter's feeling better. I know that you told me your daughter was sick tonight and that it, you, know, you did a lot to get out of the house. That's really awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Please let me know if you hear of another event coming up and I will do the same. I will do my best to refer you to anybody that I can think of that could use your goods and services. Feel free to connect with me on Facebook and I leave my Facebook link. Sincerely, Dawn Ferentino. Did I say one thing about me or my services? Did I ask Angela one time to take a look at something? No, I just made a connection. I told them I'd refer them as best I could to any friends and families for any of their products and services, told them to connect with me on Facebook, told them the event that I met them at, and gave them a personal comment on something about them. Maybe it was a piece of clothing, maybe it was about her daughter, something. Team building, guys, another great way for income producing activities, hosting calls, three-way calls, training new people on systems, events, and contests. I'm gonna skip past that now just because I know we're running out of time. Personal development, guys, you gotta do personal development outside of isogenics events. Personal development doesn't mean, I went to celebration. Yeah, that doesn't cut it. Like you gotta do stuff outside of just going to an event or two. 10% of your income should be put aside specifically for, for some kind of personal development training, books, events, coaches, something. I remember David Wood saying, and it always stuck with me, you can only grow your business to the extent that you grow yourself. So if you're not working on yourself daily, your business is not going to grow. Be a professional inviter, making a list, showing excitement in your voice. I remember we had a, um, like it wasn't a super Saturday, but it was like, it was during the week, um, Travis Garza came out and we did, um, and Chris Nish, that's how long ago it was. And we did um, like an opportunity meeting. It was like on a Thursday night. And I invited so many people that when they said, how many people have five people? Like a million people stood up and they're like, oh, well, let's go higher. Who has eight people? And like there was still some, stand I had 15 people at that event. And I know some of you guys were there when we had it. I had 15 people because it's excitement. When you have excitement in your voice, they're excited. When you smile on the phone, they feel that. I'm not in my office tonight because I just walked in. Somebody took me off my birthday. So I was like running to get on this call. But in my office, I have a mirror. And I look in the mirror every time before I make a call. And I make sure I'm smiling. We all, we all have stuff that goes on in our lives. And there's many times that we're not in the mood to make that call, right? Sometimes we have a lot of bad stuff going on and, and you know, really takes us down, right? But if you look in that mirror and you start smiling and you're asking yourself, would I hire me today? Would I sign up with me today? Would I, you know, am I the person that wants some, this person to show up in my business today? And you look at yourself in the mirror, the mirror doesn't lie. So when you start to ask yourself those questions and you start to smile, people on the other side hear that. Leave yourself a voicemail from your home phone while you're smiling, because I'm smiling right now. Isn't my voice different? So when you're smiling, you can hear a difference. So leave yourself a voicemail doing just that. Showing value at uh, the speaker of the event. So when Alexis has her team trainings, like, you know, especially when she had Ed Blunt, I mean, I was like promoting the crap out of him. Like, you know, hey, you guys don't want to miss this. This is going to be awesome. As soon as she started giving her, you know, the, the panel and the people that were going to be speaking and, and the testimonials, I'm promoting all those people and then asking for that commitment. Angela, can you commit to me that you're going to be there? So here's the statistics, guys, and it's super important that you look at this. 80% of all sales require five follow-ups. 80%. Following up with the, within five minutes makes it nine times more likely. Now, we're not going to be following up in five minutes if we're at a networking event. Leads take up to 47% larger purchases. And let me get to this one because this is the most important one. And again, we only have like 30 seconds. 48% never follow up. Never. Never follow up after the initial call. 25% after the second. 12 after the third. 10 after, after three. But now that's us. Here's the buyer. 
are made after the first phone call, 3% after the second, <clears throat> five after the third. Look at that bottom number, guys, 10 after the fourth, 80. 80% of people need five touches or more. That's why I said, how many of you guys stopped after five? And I'm one of them. There's many people that I didn't contact after five times. But if you don't contact people after five times, 80% of people are ready after the fifth time. So Angela, I am sorry I went a couple minutes over. I, I know I rushed this call. I hope it was valuable and that some, you guys got some really great information. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and pass it back to Angela. Thank you so, so much, Dawn. I appreciate you getting on. Everybody hop on to our Monday night systems call. Jody is hooking it up right now. This was amazing. Every single day, we should absolutely be in action. There should never be a day where you feel like you don't know what to do or you don't have what to do. You always have what to do. If there's nothing going on on Facebook, take your butt down the road and start talking to businesses and stores. There's so many different channels. Alexis yelled at me tonight and said, how many lead sources do you have off of Facebook? You have to have lead sources off of Facebook. And tonight was a beautiful example of just that. We should be in action every single day. This is nothing more than speaking to three people a day, right? Three people a day, three follow-ups a day, three new connections. So I love this call. It's my favorite call because it literally tells you exactly what you should be doing each and every day with your business. So thank you so much. Happy birthday. Recording will be up and posted along with the assignment and the week, uh, the winners of week seven and eight. Thanks guys.